Okay, um, welcome to uh, welcome to this session on productive versus non-productive, the difference between keeping and losing an FTE. Um, wanted to do this session for you. It's a fairly simple topic. However, uh, it's amazing how sometimes something that is simple can get quite complex, especially depending upon how you look at it. Um, I would suggest that as you look at productive versus non-productive, um, you really try to keep in mind that in facility services, we have a lot of time um, in transition. We have a lot of time we do, um, I guess, what you call soft services or value-added services. And we'll go over this in a minute. And we also just have a lot of downtime when it comes to meetings and things like that um, that can kind of make this kind of a very difficult issue for us. I hope by the time we're done, it just gives you some insight on what's expected from an HR perspective, but also it gives you some insight on how you can start maybe thinking about key performance indicators and maybe tighten up this issue because it makes a big, big difference, as you'll see, on the overall impact of, of the performance, effectiveness, and really staffing of your department. The first thing is, why is this important? Well, every hour counts, and that's becoming more relevant um, these days. How we organize our work, you know, how we organize our tools, how we organize our manpower is just becoming a critical issue. Budgeting, of course, is right there with that. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, vacation coverage um, is as we have older um, and more seasoned folks um, at our facilities they get a lot more time off and that become and they start taking a lot more time off um, flexi or not um, you know sometimes you just need to make the decision maybe you're not in a position to hire a full-time person maybe not even a part-time person but maybe somehow some way you can justify uh, what I call a flexi somebody who does not get benefits they might get a little bit more pay but you use them intermittently as you need them, and therefore they're not really on the payroll um, per se in terms of a, a full-time or part-time employee, but you can get valuable hours. Uh, this is often very, very useful when it comes to uh, departments like security. Um, I might see some use for these in some other departments as well, but security is particularly one very, very, um, pl very place, important place where you can use this. Uh, and then meetings, meetings, meetings. You know, um, you know, we really need to look at all of those meetings that we get involved in, and we need to figure out where to place them. Personally, as as we go through this, and I'll say this again, I'd like to see these go under non-productive versus productive, um, particularly if they're not training sessions, because healthcare is just loaded with meetings that are not. Um, you know, that are not training sessions and that are directly relevant, but take a lot of our time. Okay, from an HR perspective, you know, any work hours outside of paid breaks, meals, and vacation, that's pretty much productive time. It's pretty simple. Um, of course, unpaid lunches does not count. Uh, and very often, that's pretty much the case. Most places, that's the way it is. You work eight and a half hours, and that half hour is unpaid, and therefore, it doesn't count towards your calculation. Typically, most organizations, uh, I think it's required to give one 15-minute break for every four hours with work. So that amounts to two 15-minute breaks per eight-hour day, or 30 minutes per day. And then, of course, vacation, holiday, and pay time off bank. Um, keep in mind, new employees will have approximately 160 hours a year. That's two weeks of vacation plus, you know, vacation plus uh, holidays and things like that. And that works out to 8% of to their total hours. Long-term employees can earn as much as 300 hours per year. I've seen that to be about 240 to 300 is about the cap for long-term employees. And if at that 300 watermark, that's 15% of their total productivity. So they're gone twice as much as your newbies. Um, and, and you feel that, you definitely feel that as, as time marches on. Okay, now the reality is this, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, we have lots of meetings. Um, we have training sessions. Uh, again, that really is productive time, but again, it's not really doing the work in PMs and projects. Then there's transition. And I look at transition um, from a non-productive perspective, although it, it doesn't count towards the real calculations for HR when it comes to our departments that transition time between jobs is just it's 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 significant it's probably one of the biggest loss of productivity we have is transition you know getting the parts getting the filters going from one one circuit to another work ticket leaving the floor to go to an outbuilding outbuilding to go to you know some other 
area of the campus or, or someplace else. That's a big, 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 big thing. If you can organize that, and actually that's this is one of the areas where when you look at um, zone maintenance, if you do zone maintenance calculations right, this can be a big, big, big payoff by eliminating transitions. Of course, holidays, um, you know, I put that here because the holidays, we're not talking about holiday vacations, I'm talking about the holidays. Hospitals are just wrought with uh, all kinds of parties around the holidays. You know, if it's Christmas time uh, or if it's, um, you know, some kind of a other holiday throughout the year, um, you're going to see costume parties and people are going to go walking around and getting dressed for costumes. Um, you're going to see all kinds of preparing for these meetings, you know, we are going to be involved with setting up rooms and tearing down rooms and dealing with extra things as it relates. You know, you, you yourself will probably begin involved in judging costumes and things like that. Um, you know, think, so holidays add a lot of non-productive time to the facilities world. And then, of course, I mentioned before value-added services. Value-added services are really tough because these are the kind of things that we do that nobody really knows that we do that's outside the scope of maintenance, PMs, and projects. And it could be anything from helping the volunteer group to, you know, setting up a decontent for, you know, summer camp for kids to giving tours to uh, who knows who, um, you know, to just giving, you know, assistance to the administrator, to doctors, you know, with their car or you just never know what it is. It's a big list of things. And I'll mention I've mentioned this during the course. and I mentioned again, if you're not tracking value added services as a separate category and totaling that up and showing that to your direct report. Um, you're making a big mistake. You really need to add up these extra things we do beyond a normal scope. This particularly comes into play if they ever think about contracting out your department and outsourcing you because for sure the outsource company will not do all these things and they certainly will charge for all these value added services. So it's good to track them and remind your administration all that you do extra beyond the normal. And it seems like as departments get more entrenched in the culture of a healthcare facility, the more value added services we're engaged in. Well, doing the math. Okay, so let's say you have 10 hourly full-time employees, or 40-hour employees, okay? And that's, a you know, 10 full-time FTE, full-time equivalents, okay? Um, so we're going to calculate productivity here. So 20, normally that's 2,080 hours a year. So if you take 40 hours times 52 weeks, you get 2,080 hours. You take that times 10 employees, you get 20,800 hours. That's what you have to work with, all the hours. Well, let's start breaking it down. So let's say you have five employees that have that nice, they're newbies, they got 160 hours of a PTO a year. You have three employees that have 240, they've been here you know, a long time. And then you get your, your other, or three with 240. Then you have two more employees with 300. You know, they've been here, maybe they're getting ready to retire the next two, three, four years. So you take this and you add that to the, you also look at the breaks, which is 30 minutes per day. So let's bring this together. So your, your pay time off equals 800 plus 720 plus 600. That's taking those five, three, and two employees. That equals 2,120 hours. Now you take breaks, and I did a calculation for that. This is the raw calculation, 1,300 hours, just based on all those days. Uh, when you deduct the hours for PTO, it takes off about 26 or 260 hours, but that's okay. Let's use 130 or 1,300 right now. So we're going to take this pay time off. We're going to take this HR break time off, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to put it together, and you come up with 3,420 hours of lost time, if you will, non-productive time. So just the most basic formula, um, when you divide that by a full-time equivalent, you get 1.65 full-time non-productive um, employee. Okay, this last uh, page um, or slide is just a very basic overview of part-time increments for FTE or full-time equivalents. Uh, as we spoke earlier, 40 hours is one full-time equivalent. Uh, when we do calculations, you typically do calculations by the tenth, or pretty much every four hours uh, works out to be one-tenth less of an equivalent. So 36 hours is 0 0.9, 32 is 0 0.8, uh, 28 is 0 0.7, and 24.6, 20.5, and so forth. I make the point there that the breaking point for benefits, which is at 32 hours, I, I think that is a requirement. Um, I could be wrong. I have heard something about 30 and 28, although that's different um, than what I'm familiar with. Um, but at 32 hours, that's when benefits come into play. Um, there are benefits for part-time employees, but they're typically reduced benefits. And then at a certain number, there are no benefits. Um, typically under 20 hours, you get to the place where there's no benefits and it's considered, you know, what I call flexi employees. 
but that 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 full-time benefit is is significant because for some organizations i've seen it as low as around 28 30 percent and as high as 60 percent and it is different person to person some people have more insurance coverage um, some people have uh, again different 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 um, premiums associated with their tenure and such and organizations look very very closely at that at that um at that information um you know when one or two or three percent counts a little bit when you have benefit differences of a lot more than that it it it's a major difference 